Welcome back. The jury pool is growing in the Justin Ross Harris case. He's the dad accused of leaving his 22-month-old son Cooper to die in a hot car. 31 jurors have not qualified to be part of the jury pool, but they still need around a dozen more before they even begin to whittle things uh, down. Joining me now from outside the Cobb County Courthouse, defense attorney and CNN legal analyst, Philip Holloway. Philip, it's good to talk to you again. Uh, they have t 31 qualified jurors so far. When do you think they're going to have a full jury, the full 40 that you believe they need in order to then begin whittling that down? Well, good afternoon, Yasmin. And yes, things are growing. The jury pool now, as you said, is at 31, although we could lose one who is in late stages of her pregnancy. My best pr prediction is that uh, towards the end of this week, maybe even perhaps by Thursday afternoon or Friday, we will be in that 40-plus range of qualified jurors that will be needed to seat a pool of uh, 12 jurors plus uh, probably at least four alternates. Yasmin? We keep hearing uh, about potential jurors th that say they feel that Justin Ross Harris is guilty. What has been Harris's uh, reaction when hearing potential jurors say this? And is there any coaching going on, you think? This morning in particular, we heard a few jurors, one in particular, that said, I know he's guilty, I just would want to know guilty he is. That was one of the group of people that was agreed upon by the sides uh, in the last few minutes to be excused for cause. From where I was seated, there was really no show of emotion by Justin Ross Harris when this person was talking about his uh, belief that Harris was guilty. Now, we don't know what that means. Uh, he's been in jail now almost two months, or excuse me, two years. This case has been pending a while. He could simply be numb to it. We really don't know what to read into that. Yes, but well, we, ha we have seen sort of a roller coaster ride of emotions from Ross Harris since the very beginning, since we've been following uh, this jury selection process. I mean, at one point, he was uh, fist bumping uh, one of his attorneys, which I believe we have some footage of. That was sort of more towards the beginning. And then we saw him uh, crying when, when a juror was sort of recounting um, what had happened or what she remembered hearing about what happened to his son. So there has sort of been a roller coaster ride of emotions from this man, despite the fact that he has been in, in jail for almost two years now. That's not at all uncommon. It doesn't surprise me in the least, Yasmin, because I've, I've had clients that have been sitting in jail for a couple of years before their murder trial starts, and they're sad, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes they're happy. Sometimes they're somewhere in between, and in the event of an acquittal, obviously, they're elated, and that was what, hap what happened the last time I had somebody who sat in jail for two years before their murder trial. But uh, that being said, we really just don't know. But what, what lawyers tell their clients, we say, look, just be yourself, but be aware that the jury's always watching. Watching you, and while we may not be able to interpret what it means, the jury is going to make up their mind what any emotion might mean. All right, let's talk quickly about these looming motions. There was a motion to question the jurors uh, in a sequestered fashion. That is actually happening. There's two motions that still stand: uh, the potential for the jurors to take a field trip and for this look-alike uh, of Cooper Harris to be a part of the trial. What's standing with those two motions? Uh, those are among a, a handful of motions by both the prosecution and the defense leading up to the beginning of jury selection in this case. Uh, with regard to the issue of the doll, uh, apparently the prosecution has a uh, facsimile of uh, Cooper Harris that they want to use to show the jury. The, pro the defense says, look, we want to exclude that uh, because we believe that it would be unduly prejudicial. In other words, the probative value would be outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice against our client. With regard to the field trip, the prosecution wants to take the jury along the route traveled by Justin Ross Harris uh, on the morning uh, and throughout the day, actually, of uh, Cooper's death back in uh, the summer of 2014. It's probably going to be granted. Uh, there's really no way for a jury to actually fully comprehend uh, the evidence unless they have the ability to lay their eyes on these specific places. Uh, during the trial, and it will make the evidence make a lot more sense to them. Yeah, yeah I mean, to a certain extent, it seems like it would be important to understand the route in which Justin Ross Harris took when Cooper was in his car to the point in which Cooper passed. That's absolutely correct. And uh, a good lawyer, whether you're a prosecutor or you're a defense attorney, right. I always make it a point to go to the scene myself because it helps me understand what I'm dealing with. Yeah, and you and want it's the you same want... thing for a jury. Right. The lawyers and the juries want to know every single thing yes. they need to know about the case in order to make a decision, the best decision at that. Philip Holloway, thanks so much for joining us. Always appreciate it. By the way, keep it right here for the latest in the hot.